Welcome to IconTube, a show dedicated to the influencers industry. In this season, we interviewed some of the most popular influencers from various industries, and together we will discover their path that they took to become successful business owners. I'm your host, Jolie Live. Today, I am with a beautiful host and actress who was born in West Hollywood, California, but was raised in Mexico. She started her career as a host and actress at the age of 10 and worked with major brands, including Kraft and JCPenney. In 2009, she competed in a Fox Sports beauty pageant where she won her title as Miss Mexico USA. In recent years, she has been a spokesperson and image for brands like Dearden and Wen by Chad Steen. She appeared as a TV host on TV Aztecs for the show The Skin of the Night. And now she has her own clothing brand, Jay-Z Style. I'm so excited to welcome Joanna Zanella. Hello, Joanna. Hi, good morning. Good afternoon, babe. <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm really excited to learn all about you and all the little details. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Yeah, so I was born in Hollywood, California, which is ironic, but it's true. I was born at Kaiser um, off of Sunset. <laughs> and um, I was born here, and then my parents moved back to Mexico, to Guadalajara. Mm -hmm. And that's where I grew up. You know, my grandparents, my cousins, my uncles, yeah. everybody was there. Um, and I was there till about nine years old. And I grew Definitely up. a change from Hollywood. A change from Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know Hollywood too much then. Yeah, though, so it was, yeah, I was fine. Um, we moved to the States. And I kind of grew up watching my mom, uh, you know, she was a singer in Mexico, a performer. Yeah. And so when we moved back to the States, I kind of had like a little bit of that itch yeah. from what my mom used to do. But growing up in Mexico was amazing. You know, mm -hmm. I, I loved everything about it. I When I got here, I was kind of depressed as a child, yeah. I think, because I was so used to having my uncles, my cousins, my like friends, a lot of going to school, all, all my family. And then I came to the US and I mean I had my dad's side of the family but yeah. I didn't know them so it was like I had it's nothing like starting over, starting over. yeah I didn't speak in. English so that you was didn't. a whole challenge nope I didn't speak any English so it was a challenge it was yeah. tough but I think um, it was a good change and I'm glad that we yeah. decided to come back to the states and even though I missed Mexico I, I yeah. grew love for LA learned English <laughs> and learned English <laughs> and speaking about your parents they probably had a huge impact on your life can you tell us like a little bit about how important they are to you yeah, so my parents are amazing. My dad was an architect in Mexico, and my mom worked um, for a governor of Guadalajara, who mm -hmm. was also the owner of the Chivas team, which I think where the soccer and the sports love kind of started yeah. because I grew up like watching Chivas and going to the games. My parents used to take me, and so it was nice to have that, but also I yeah. knew that my parents wanted to come to the U.S. to give, I have a brother, uh, my brother and I, a better life. Yeah, for sure. And so that was always kind of in the back of my mind, like I have to you know, do something. I have to be successful yeah. for my parents. Yeah, for myself as well. For but, <laughs> but just to show them that it was the sacrifice they made was yeah, worth, worth it. it. You know, and so I, I feel think, that I one. think it's uh, I think it's worked out okay. Yeah, I mean, I, de I definitely think it has as well. <laughs> Thank you, but yeah, my parents are amazing. I love them both, and um, it's I couldn't ask for better ones for sure. And they supported your career. Absolutely, in everything. everything. Yeah, I think my mom because she kind of grew up doing that, yeah. and she, that's what she used to do in Mexico. Um, that she just knew from day one, like, that's what I was going to do. Yeah. And she always supported me, and she would always tell me, sit up straight and do this all and that. do that, like, all the things that I needed side, to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, she's here today with me, too. Um, I always kind of have her around for yeah. things because I like having her support there Close and by, yeah. you know she'll we'll make a little eye contact and she'll be like your hand yeah, like, like oh, okay and I'll sit up straight <laughs> so it's, it's nice. so nice to have your mom around yeah and my dad too I mean he's always been super supportive and he's like my number one fan yeah. too so I don't bring dad on set as much because I feel like it's not as fun you know with <laughs> yeah the whole he might not like hair, it as much mom but <laughs> but yeah no he's they're around. they're great parents <laughs> Your career, you had such success. How did you decide to get, like, obviously sports inspired you when you were little, but how did, where did your career really start? So when we moved to, Me uh, to the States from Mexico, like I said, I was in a really sad place because yeah. I had lost everything. And so my mom put me into um, acting classes with a lady um, whose name is Blanca Valdez. And she's mm -hmm. my godmother now because oh, I've known her for so long and yeah. I actually started with her. and. You know, I went and I would audition and she would teach me how to slate and just like all the basics that you yeah. need to learn. And then I started booking commercials and it just became like this 
thing that was so natural to me yeah. um, that I worked with Nickelodeon. I did a whole bunch of print That's stuff. So cool. um, it just kind of took off on its own, I think, because it's what I was meant yeah. to do from day one, and it just came naturally to me. For sure. um, so that took off, and when I really got into sports, I think was right after high school, mm -hmm. because um, I kind of had to make a choice whether I would move to Miami to pursue telenovelas, yeah. And that whole, oh, the drama, <laughs> with, you know, like as we're used to in Mexico. Yeah. Um, and I didn't mind it because I did love it and I love acting. But there was something about being myself yeah. that I loved that comes with hosting. Um, I love acting, of course, because you yeah. can play somebody else that's and where you be started. someone else. And that, that. Yeah, that's where I started. But hosting, I could be myself and I found that. I was really good at pulling things from people, people yeah. and interacting with and people. And not a lot of people can do that. Like, not, it's yeah, hard. It's hard. So I think I was good at it. And, and Blanca was like, I think you need to stay and you need to focus yeah. on sports and hosting because that's what you love and that's yeah. what you're really good at. And I was like, yeah, you, you might be right. Yeah. So I didn't go to Miami. And I started doing that. So we would go to soccer games and mm -hmm. I would try and like watch other girls that I yeah. would look up to and see what they were doing until finally I got the opportunity to cover soccer. Um, yeah. through Coors Light okay, and yeah. I started doing segments with Coors Light so I would go to all the like MLS games or mm -hmm. Liga Mexicana and cover soccer games with them and then that's when I uh, got picked up with Univision which was like that's my dream huge. come true yeah. because I grew up watching Univision and yeah. they uh, every Sunday and Saturday they would play soccer games and I was just like wow, wow this is like insane like, like yeah. that what it would be like and then one day I get the call they're like hey we want to bring you're you like, on uh, what? so it's like me and it was great. Um, it was just like, I, th I was crying for like two hours oh, yeah. because I was like, this is my dream, you know, Naturally like I've always wanted to do yeah. this. And with Univision, who's like the biggest Latin, Hispanic TV network ever. ever. So it was crazy and it was yeah. fun. And I think from there, my career just kind of took off. Mm -hmm. Were you so nervous your first gig? I'm not going to lie. I was, but in a good way because yeah. I was ready. You know, so I, ready. I think I was just nervous you do because... you for so long, you're yeah, like, it when just it happens, happened. you're just like, oh my God, I'm ready. I think I was just like, man, I don't want to screw this up because people that are now watching you're me, watching. Like, <laughs> the, like I grew like, up watching Univision watching. and now they're watching me. And what's funny, yeah. um, speaking about that, is that my mom actually took a picture of me when I was like 10 or 11. Yeah. We went to this store called Curacao, which is still mm -hmm. like happening. And they were doing these auditions for a little segment for Univision. That's and I, my mom's like, just do it, you know, just go up there. And I was like, okay. I ended up like winning that day, whatever the yeah. little segment was. <laughs> yeah. And there's a picture of me holding a Univision mic. And I'm Fast 10. forward. Oh my God. Fast forward. I don't know, like 10, 15, 20 yeah. years later. And, and you're like I actually am, like, doing actually it. Actually working with Univision. So I put That's the picture crazy. side to side and it was like, I. I you have to frame that and like put it I in I feel your like house. I do. And it was just like one of those moments where you're like, wow, I made yeah. it. Like I did what I wanted to do. Right. Like, like my little whole 10 year old life. you would have been yeah, like, yeah, I we'll see what happens. Yeah, then. like how would I have now? known at 10 that it was fast forward yeah, to what I was reality. really going to do? Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. It's really cool. And what would you say would be like your the most amazing moment of your work life that you always just remember? Well, there's a couple because I always had, you know, amazing time and I think yeah. just interviewing certain players because I was super obsessed with soccer yeah. and I loved it. But when I interviewed Ronaldo, which oh. like I grew up watching him. Yeah. So when I had the opportunity to actually sit He's and like interview him right and I was like, this is crazy. Like I'm literally interviewing people that like yeah. I grew up watching, you know, so that was amazing. But the other one that I can't forget, which is not any way like a good memory, but it's yeah. still crazy is <laughs> yeah. when um, there was a UFC fight mm -hmm. and one of the fighters, uh, Anderson Silva, when that when he broke his leg I don't know if you remember that thing and it like cracked yeah, this way and it was insane yeah. I was literally like two rows from the actual octagon because I mean I, I was working yeah. with the UFC and it was just something that I'd never experienced and the sound of oh. a human being cracking his bones imagine. was insane it was crazy but those two I would say are oh like gosh. one of the I most mean, vivid you ones Oh my God, what yeah, this You were close, close. Oh yeah, I was probably from here to the edge of the of the chair here when it happened. <sighs> like, okay. Oh and it was crazy. God. And I guess one more, it was with Shaq, Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah. We started an interview and I mean, obviously he's huge. Yeah. So I was, I was like massive. this, right? Massive. And I couldn't hear, like I was asking the question. But you couldn't hear his answer. And I'm looking like with the deer in the headlights, like look, like I, I can't hear what he's You're responding. like, okay, on to the next. I'm like, well, thank you so much. I have no idea what you said, yeah. but thank you. And I actually ended up getting like an apple box because yeah. I kept going like this, like I can't hear. And I'm telling my producer, like, I don't know what he's saying. So then they cut and they were like, 
Shaq, do you mind if we do it again? Yeah. And, and I was like, I'm sorry, I just couldn't hear, hear you. He's probably like, I'm used to it. Like, all right. <laughs> so then they brought an Apple box, and I got on the Apple box, and at least I looked more normal, and <laughs> yeah. I was able to semi-hear what yeah, was like, going on. So but that was funny, too. And it was nice that he was really cool yeah, to definitely. let me start over. I feel like he, w like he just seems like a very genuine person, yeah, too, to be cool. like, okay. Yeah, he was cool about it. So. And what would you say was one of your like not-so-proud moments? Um, I don't think I've had a not so proud moment. Um, I guess a stressful moment would be yeah. where like we were going live from this carnival in uh, Chicago. It was like a big, huge deal for soccer. Mm -hmm. And we were live and I remember st what something happened. Um, we were trying to follow along. So like we have certain guidelines that we yeah. have to follow. And like, so my segment was this, something, you know, blah, blah, blah. blah. And there was like four yeah. of us that were all live in different areas. So then I hear in my ear, they're like, Joanna, Carla's um, live feed is not working. So now you have to do her spot plus yours. Plus yours. And I was like, what? what? Like, I have no idea what yeah. she was going to And they're like, by the way, we go on in two minutes. You're like, oh, okay. I'm like, Let oh, me very prepare. cool. Let me just make stuff up. So yeah. I'm like, but what is she going to talk about? Can you at least tell me what the whole thing was? So here I am crunching and like trying to figure out how I'm going to do her segment first, which I had never heard of. I don't even know what she was doing and then go into mine. Yeah. So it was just, I guess it was the opposite. It was yeah. a proud moment, but very stressful. Nailed it, but yes, because super stressful. I was just like, oh great. Not even after. The entire US is watching. Yeah. And Casual. I don't know what I'm doing. Casual. Super cool, great. <laughs> so it was cool. Um, I, I made it work. Yeah. I think we have to, you know, no yeah. choice. When you're live. <laughs> when you're live. So hopefully it was a good moment and hopefully I didn't yeah. look ridiculous to everyone a else. Crazy one like, oh, crazy a woman. One. She doesn't know what she's talking about, but there she is. Becomes a meme. Yeah. <laughs> Fast forward to your personal life now. You're married to a retired comedian UFC fighter. How do you find that like work life balance? Um, it's tough. So when I met Bren, um, he was fighting in the UFC yeah. and I, it's crazy because I would watch the UFC with my family and I was like, man, how these guys like fight. I could never, you know, like go out with one of them or like have a son who would fight because it would just yeah. be awful and stressful. Here I am. <laughs> two uh, sons later. Two sons husband. later. <laughs> no, but it, I actually was with him uh, in the last three of his fights, and yeah. it was insane. Like, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. I was like, I, I felt like I was just going to throw up at any moment. It was just crazy. Um, yeah. But I was kind of used to having him, you know, like travel. And yeah. during camp, I mean, he did like 12 weeks of camp, so mm -hmm. we couldn't really go out and do much because he was on a strict diet and yeah, doing like whatever. Yeah, insane. so that was crazy. But then he retires and becomes this comedian, and I was like, oh, very cool. Like, <laughs> very cool. Very cool. <laughs> but then now it's like he travels so much that yeah. it almost like, even though he's not an athlete per se, you he's never think like comedians yeah. travel so much and they do stand up at night and mm -hmm. so it's it's we call it we're in the we're in the rough stage yeah. right now <laughs> yeah. not of our relationship but just spending time, time together, together because then yeah. add two kids I was gonna say you, you know? have Tiger and Boston your two sons yeah so it's it's crazy but I think uh, we're a good team you know yeah. because um, we just have to make it work yeah. you know he he's a great dad he works hard and I hold down the fort yeah, at home when at he's home. gone, you know, and when we were together, we were like the yin to the yang. So yeah. it works, but it is hard. I won't say it's not because, you know, he misses a lot of things sometimes. Yeah, and, definitely. You know, weekends, we don't spend weekends together as much. We don't have too many date nights. And then when we do have date nights and we plan it and I'm like, hey, mom, so we're going to go watch a yeah. movie. We're going to go to dinner. And we go to this, we have a, a movie planned for 9.15. Yeah. So we're like, oh, that's perfect. We'll go to dinner around 8. We finish dinner, we're exhausted <laughs> yeah, because you know. we have two kids. Yeah. And mind you, Tiger gets up at like 5, five in the morning. So we're like, yeah, maybe uh, let's like not, not go to the movies. <laughs> not, like, you know? do you want to go home and watch American Idol or something? You know, so we'll do that. We'll li we literally, couple, but yeah, <laughs> we, I got dressed up. I was like, yes, I'm going to look cute. We're going to go. I was exhausted by like yeah. half the dinner. And I was like, yeah, let's just put our PJs on. When you look on. super cute to go into your yeah, living room. Yeah, <laughs> to go into my living room. And I came home and I just like washed my face, put my PJs on. And I was like, this, this is, is great. This is, this, this this is what do. we should have done from the beginning, yeah. you know? <laughs> So, but it, it's it's good. It's just adjusting. You yeah. know, it's not, I'm sure it won't be like this forever. The kids will be older, and For I'll sure. have more time to travel with him um, yeah. because I do want to travel with him at times and go mm -hmm. to you know his work. But 
it's hard because leaving the two kids behind. Yeah, because it's hard. They're so little. They're so like, little. And then it, I can't just be like, oh, here, mom, see you later. Yeah, like, I'm gonna go take care of my later. kids while I go live my life. So, yeah. Um, and my mom is a huge help, and she yeah. she would do that, but I exactly. wouldn't want to do that to her. Yeah. And I like I I'm a super involved mom. I mean, I'm like a full time mom now. So, yeah. that's and my you job. have Tiger and Boston, which two sons. Do you see them? Like, do you think they'll they're interested in what dad has done? Like, do they understand? Like, um, he was like fight a fighter. Or so anything? Tiger, since he was little, he used to love what he called him Pow Pow. We we're gonna watch Pow Pow. So he would sit there, and he was one. He was probably one, and we were watching UFC. And Tiger was just sitting there like this. You're like, staring. oh boy. I was like, no, <laughs> no. you know, like yeah. it's in his blood. He can't help it. Yeah. Um, I know Bren doesn't want them to have anything to do with fighting, just yeah. because it's a rough life. I mean, it it's is. not an easy gig. Getting punched in the face and training and. It's not easy. Yeah. So I know that for us as parents, we wouldn't want them to do that. But yeah. also we can't tell them, no, you're forbidden. Because if it is in their blood and in their genetics, yeah. that's what they're going to end up doing anyways. Do. They're going to find a they're way gonna around it. They're going to find a way around it and they're going to do it. Um, but we, we'll support whatever you yeah. know it is they want to do. I'll be like, no, nope, you can't do it. You're going to get hurt. You know, I'll scare them. Yeah. I'll be the one to scare them. Yep. And then hopefully they'll do something else. Watch them be like, end up being hosts in like sports reporters. You're <laughs> right? like, okay, okay that's like, fine. Mom. That's fine. Great. <laughs> that's going to be great. And you won two prestigious awards. Can you tell us a little bit about them back to your career side of your life? Yeah, so the first one was the Gabriels Award. Um, yeah. And I got that when I was younger. I think I was like 13. Um, I used to do a lot of dubbing, like voice dubbing and voiceovers. Yeah. So I there was like uh, movies or soap operas that would be in English and I would translate them, them to the to, Spanish, yeah. yeah, the dubbing. And so um, we had the soap opera that did really well in Brazil and South America. And uh, that's what we won the award for. Yeah. And it was that's huge because, I mean, in the voiceover industry and stuff, to win an actual Gabriel's Award is kind of a big yeah. deal, and especially being 13 years old. You know, yeah, that was literally. really cool. That's my voice. That's me. That was me. Um, and then the other one was the Imagen Award. Mm -hmm. I worked on this series called Sin Vergüenza, which is without shame. Yeah. Um, and it talks about, like, in our Hispanic culture and the Hispanic community, a lot of people, like, God forbid, you get a divorce or, yeah. you know, you get an STD, HIV, like you don't right. talk about those things. It's yeah. taboo. Like, oh, we'll figure it out. I don't know. Tell the wall because we're yeah, not going to support gonna you, you know? It. So it was like us bringing light to stigma, you know, in, yeah. in, in these Latin communities where they don't talk about it. No one says anything. And so yeah. the soap opera did amazing. I mean, Obama actually talked wow. about it and like it was a huge thing. It was being played on Univision. On You can still find it on YouTube. And it just... It was fulfilling for me yeah. because I started getting a lot of like messages and things like, thank you for, because I played Christina, yeah. who's a girl who gets pregnant at a young age and yeah. does the whole thing. And, and people are like, wow, like that's exactly what happened to us. You yeah. know, like, thank you for like being light to it. And, it. and then they're relating to a character that I played, yeah. which was... That's got to feel so good. Yeah, like, yes, was. you were a character, but like that was your life. But that's that, someone's yeah. real life, you know? So that was really great. And so we won the Imagen Award and we were nominated again because we did three seasons. Yeah. Um, and so every season we were nominated for it and we won, you know, once, which was amazing. Huge. Yeah, it was huge. Um, and it was just great to be a part of that and, yeah. you know, get to do something different. And actually, like, we went to the HIV, um, what is it, HIV Awareness Day, where, like, mm -hmm. they celebrate, like, HIV and stuff. I would do that and go there and... You know, you, you think, like, people who have HIV, oh, my God, you touch them, that's right. it. Right, like, like, it's, like, one of those things, like, oh, my God, no. And yeah. it's not that way. And a lot of people still think that way because they're not educated about how yeah. the illness really it's works. It's definitely, like, a topic you are kind right. of talking Right, and even about, myself, so. I learned a lot about it yeah. because of this series. You know, there was so mm -hmm. many things that I thought would happen, and they don't, you know. Yeah. So it was nice. It was a learning experience, but also very fulfilling in the fact that like I got to play somebody who actually lives through that on a daily yeah. basis and it was fun yet sad and I just it was it was good a good experience it was a good experience too, all yeah, around all around and through all of this you've been doing you've been gaining a lot of social media followers Instagram's huge this day and age what would you say is how you deal with like negative comments on Instagram and stuff Honestly, I don't let it bother me because yeah. I just feel like those people who are doing the negativity and like putting the negative comments are people sitting at home doing nothing, just yeah. bored, that have nothing going on for them. And they're just sitting there trying to find things to make me feel bad about. Yeah. Or, 
it's just it's not cool. I don't think it's cool because they don't put even their face to their name. Yeah, like it's we don't even like know some you, random you don't even dog picture yeah. or something. You know, it's like okay, well, if you're gonna do that, at least do it from like a real account to where I know we, where it's coming no, from. Right, we can see what you. We can at see least what you're like. doing. You know. <laughs> yeah. So I don't let it. I don't let it bother me. I think growing up in the industry and being around it, there's so much hate and yeah. competition in between women and men, and just the whole thing that I think I build kind of like a hard shell For and sure. tough skin. You need to. So nothing really bothers me. I will say it. it bothers me when they bring in my kids yeah because like the then that's like the, I'm on. like it's a like, oh, freaking no. lion you know but even then I don't acknowledge it because I think yeah. the more you acknowledge it they win mm -hmm. so I just I let it go I don't even read half of them anymore yeah um but you know the the followers that are amazing and send me messages and I yeah, love that's them worth, because like, that's I love worth. interacting and I love I try and always get back to them even if it's yeah. like a week later but I try and always respond and Make yeah. them feel like I am a part of them, you know, because they're a part of me and they're a part sure. of my family. So it's it's nice. Instagram could be great, but it could also, also be not also great. great. But it's how you see it and how you make it. And there's going to be hate all the time. And yeah. haters will, will always be there. But mm -hmm. What's it's your favorite to kind of content to post? Like, like um, videos, pics, like about... Well, I love I love Insta stories because yeah. they're just cool. But um, they're so easy. You're like, they're oh, just I'll so easy. Okay, boom, done. Um, you know, with my two pregnancies, I had really bad like hyperemesis gravidarium, where you're sick all the time, and I was like throwing up, dehydrated, yeah. and you know, people think pregnancy is oh beautiful thing, and it's a wonderful. And yeah, cool it is for some people, but for yeah. me it wasn't. Like I absolutely hate being pregnant. I hated the whole process. Yeah. I felt Especially sick. You're sick all the time. I was sick all the time. Like I don't physically like the way my body looks yeah. pregnant. And I feel like that's also a stigma because right. like when, like you, as a woman, you don't have to love being pregnant. You don't you have know. to feel beautiful. You yeah. don't have to feel like, oh, I'm glowing. I yeah. had no glow, okay? There was no glow <laughs> happening. I was throwing up the entire time. Yeah. So I think that when I post things and are clear about yeah. it, I got so many messages from women like, thank you for doing this no because one no one talks stuff. about it. Everyone's, Everyone's like, oh, like, oh my glowing. pregnancy is and great. Like, I'm great. thriving. Like, I love no. the fact that uh, there was a 50-pound thing on the front of my stomach. Oh, I love like, that I'm waddling around right. and I can't even breathe anymore, you know? So, <laughs> so I, fun. I think I was transparent and I think yeah. that moms appreciated that. To for hear sure. from someone that didn't love it. Because you see people that are big on Instagram and you're like, uh, like they're perfect like I don't relate to them at all or whatever like yeah. I, yeah they still follow you but like for your followers it's like oh my god I feel that too it was so like it's nice to like when people are actually real on Instagram yeah and I think that's that's what I try and do on yeah. Instagram especially because I have a lot of mom followers yeah and you know just a lot of sports followers still from when I mom was sports. mom and sports <laughs> um so I like to be transparent with them yeah. and, and, you know, let them know that it's it's okay. Like, Definitely. it's okay to not love being pregnant. I love my kids and I love every part of yeah. it. Totally worth it. It's just Super being worth pregnant it, but just different. it's not fun. Yeah. Um, and I also, I'm starting to post about my workouts and stuff because I, mm -hmm. you know, I had Boston three months ago. Yeah. And man, getting back into shape after the second one has been a lot. A lot. I mean, I work yeah. out four times a week, you know, so, to... And to have three months old, like three months old. Yeah, like so it's, tired, it's crazy, so. like it, what your body does and how much it takes to get back to what you used to be is insane. Yeah. But I'm trying to be patient and I always tell my trainer, I'm like, Carrie, what else can we do? <laughs> like, you know? I'll do like, I'll do anything, but here's my problem. I'm Mexican, so yeah. I love pozole, I yep. love chips, I love, yep. so I'm like, oh, well, there's my problem, it's yep. my diet. There's actually I work out like a psycho, yeah. and then I go but, home and stuff my face, yep. so yeah, very cool, you're not going to lose any weight Carrie's doing like, that. Carrie's like, oh, we know Carrie's the problem, like, Joanna. Joanna, you need to shut your mouth, and then you'll see results. That's I'm like, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, you might be right. You might be right. We'll I'll see. listen I'm going to blame you for now. Right now, I want pozole, so yeah. I'll, give, I'll just work out tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> now, we picked one of your most influential posts that you have on your Instagram account, what do you think and feel when you see that? Um, well, it's obviously, you know, we talked about my pregnancy and stuff. I was trying to work through it all yeah. because I'm like, no, this time I'm not going to let it beat me. So there was times where I think I would push myself too hard. And I, I mean, I think I was seven months pregnant there. Oh so, I mean, I was not doing well. Yeah. But yet I wanted to keep working because, yeah. I, I mean, I love working. Stop. I don't want to stop. And then I was like, this is kind of cool that, like, I can still be on TV and have this bump. Huge and belly. Huge belly. And, and it was fun. And I think a lot of women in, liked it because, 
you know, they were like, wow, she's it's seven months pregnant. Seven and she's months still pregnant. working like in huge heels yeah. in front of a camera. And I think it was cool that I got to do that. Yeah. And now that I think back to it, I'm like, man, I probably should have stayed home because there was times <laughs> where like I had to take breaks to run to the bathroom yep. and throw up and then come back and be like, oh, Cause here that we glow, are. You know? Cause the, the glow that you get when you're pregnant. Um, but I think it was fun and it was, I'm glad I did it because I yeah. proved to myself that I was like, like I did that. mentally like, I, stronger yeah. than I thought, even though I dragged myself to it. Yeah. But it was cool that at least later down the road, my kids could see too, like, oh wow, my mom Look was pregnant. Mom. She was doing the damn thing, I you know? know. Like, that would be so cool for them too, like when they understand, you know, yeah, pregnancy. Yeah, they're a little bit older, it. I'm like, like oh my God, look like, at what that, were doing I to was, me. Like, look at what mom was doing. <laughs> yeah, so that was, it was nice. And I think women enjoyed it too, to see that even though I didn't feel sexy with yeah. a huge belly and heels and a dress, like I still did it, you know, and yeah. I, I was there pushing hard. As someone who would see it not being pregnant in you and working or whatever, I like I would look at it and be like, oh my god, that girl's so cool. Like that mom's so oh, cool. Thank you. And like, I she's do, literally I, so pregnant and she's and doing still like doing, doing sports and doing that. And and that's I wanna I wanna be a cool mom. Yeah. You know, like I you, you got that on my I wanna be a cool mom. <laughs> thank you. I wanna be like just fun, you know, and yeah. I think that's another reason why I told myself, because by the way, I hated working out. I've never worked out in my life before mm -hmm. I had kids. But then like I started huffing and puffing up and down my stairs like, oh, carrying boy. Tiger. I was like, wow, this <laughs> is where I'm headed. I should probably start working out. <laughs> and I also like, I just want them, I want to be able to keep up with them. Yeah, you know, sure. especially because I have two boys. I'm a They're boy gonna mom. They're going to definitely put you through it. <laughs> They're going to put me through the ringer. So I want to make sure that I'm fit and, and able to keep up with them. Yeah, definitely. What would you say is your like next for your business life? What are you looking forward to? So when I, um, before I got pregnant with my first son, Tiger, I started a clothing company called uh, Jay-Z yeah. Style, which was fun and, and it was going great. And I was my own model because, you know, I've always been a curvy girl. Yeah. And the problem that I always have is finding the right clothes that fit me. You know, yeah. like I have a smaller waist, but big hips and a butt. So it, like jeans are impossible to right. find and tops. Like they're and too tight. They're, like too like they're huge on my waist, yeah. but then t they don't come up my knees. So I would try and find clothes that would fit curvy women that like not a stick would be able to yeah. wear, you know? So that was the whole inspiration behind it. Everything would stretch. Everything yeah. was like, amazing and then I get pregnant and then you're so like, oh. I was like oh man <laughs> so I had to put um, a little stop to it and then I got back into it after Tiger was born um, and, and then, then I stopped Boston. again <laughs> because here comes Boston I want to get back into it when my mind is right, right. and yeah. there but I also started taking um, interior design because I love um, interior design I love decorating my house I love yeah. painting I'm kind of like a handyman in a way too I fix things and like that's another passion of mine. Yeah. And like I love turning in just like a basic room into something super cute and mm -hmm. I just love doing that. So I yeah. started taking interior design when I was pregnant, but I was so sick that I couldn't even like Yeah, you were like oh, function. Well, we'll get back we'll, to we'll that. We'll get back to that. So that's another goal of mine. Um I want to finish interior design school and then, you know, start working whether it's designing homes or yeah you know, flipping them in a way where like it could be super boring, but then here I come and give it a little paint job, some decorations, yeah. and so that's That's so another. cool, because you, you literally have so much going on, but like host and actress and now interior design. Yeah, and I just, I want to stay busy. Yeah, that's yeah. one thing that I love doing. I love staying busy, and I, I don't like being at home just like, eh, I don't have yeah. anything to do. Okay, to finish up, truth or dare? I'm gonna say truth. Okay, what is the first thing that bothers you when it comes to your personal life? Uh, well, um, I care too much. Like I have OCD yeah. and that's like a huge issue that I'm just like, I wish I didn't care, yeah. you know, because so especially like, with boys, I have two you, boys. Well, they three, don't, they don't uh, care three, about three, much. They they're, they're just going. And I think that's what really bothers me about myself because yeah. I'll let a sock on the floor ruin my day. Like, you oh know, God, like, I'm just like, why? Yeah. Like I just clean the entire house. And then and Brent comes home and like there's a shoe here, socks there, takes everything yeah. off. And then Tiger, like I want my cozies. And I'm just like, why? You know, <laughs> yeah. like, but I, I know so people, hard. people don't care. And like they could live that way and things are just yeah. everywhere. And I'm psycho about it. Like, or like if a book is like this and somebody leaves it like that, you're like, oh, here I am, psychotic, God. moving it, you know? So <laughs> like, I think that's the one thing that I wish I would 
I guess, change or yeah. who knows? Maybe I need therapy. I don't know. Maybe I need to see <laughs> maybe a therapist. Maybe we'll just go that yeah. route. And I'll then just we'll go the route happens. and maybe <laughs> with therapy, my OCD yeah. will be better. So who knows? Well, it was great learning about you. I loved hearing about the boys and everything in your career. It's very, very inspiring. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you. It was so nice to meet you. And thank you for having me. Thank you for tuning in. And if you'd like to see more interviews with your favorite influencers, don't forget to like and share this video. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do. And we'll see you soon.